First, I'd like to apologize for my English. It's not good at all. I had no practice. So I'm really like to be here for the first time in the United States. Um, but for the first time as a politician, because I used to play in 90th uh, for the uh, junior basketball national team with Andrei Kirilenko, the NBA, NBA star right now. And I, uh, this weekend I uh, visited uh, uh, several American families who had adopted Russian orphans. And I want to say that I'm very grateful to them and other families taking care of our children. Uh, I want to say a few words of, uh, about pol political situation uh, in Russia. Uh, this year uh, we celebrate uh, the 20th anniversary of the Constitution that uh, came into force in 1993 um, after the parliamentary crisis when, uh, if you remember, army tanks that shelled the parliament building and in fact, the Constitution gave unlimited authority to the President. The Parliament uh, turned into the uh, second third of the power. And, uh, but this, at the same time, uh, the average $16 price for a barrel of oil didn't yet, uh, let ex-President Yeltsin to establish control over the par Parliament, the court system. And um, that's why it was a short time of political competition in Russia. And after Putin uh, had came to, to the power, um, uh, Russia became unbelievably lucky in its oil price, and uh, it helped uh, Putin to become the most one of the most the most popular politician, and to establish a authoritarian um, state with uh, toughly uh, central control, and. Um, but at the same time, it, it's a bad news, and now it's, it's going to be good news. Um, at the same time, uh, the technological revolution has happened in, in Russia. Um, internet population has increased in, uh, in the last two years. Uh, statistics say that 45 million of Russians, it's one third of our population, uh, use the internet daily. And um, uh, that's why that, uh, the middle class has appeared in Russia. And uh, people share independent information on the internet, and donate funds for different programs, and even organize protest uh, actions uh, and different rallies. I need sometimes to, to look at my text, <laughs> sorry. Um, and the middle class surprising uh, create um, a great new demand for changes and political renewal and people want to uh, participate in uh, politics, want to see new faces, new political parties. Uh, and after Putin came back to the Kremlin and uh, the parliamentary election were totally forged, um, the protest moods start to rise immediately. And if you could see, uh, hundreds of thousands of people took to the street. But uh, it usually happened in uh, Moscow in the big city, but nevertheless in the future I think um, people from different regions uh, will be able to, to, to take to the streets uh, trying to solve their social problems. Um, and as a result of this internet uh, revolution, um, our citizens divided on uh, so-called uh, TV citizens, or TV citizens who just get information from the only television, and uh, net citizens. It's one third, and uh, people who do not don't uh, watch television and get all the news from the internet. And for the first time in our history. Um, the most popular internet search system, Yandex, it's Russian Google, outnumbered uh, the rating of the popular uh, Channel One. And it's, it's very good news, um, and because uh, we used to call Russian state television as a zombie box or idiot box because it manipulates public opinion. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, and th there was a serious um, uh, split in political beliefs in Russia. And after the election, after uh, middle class uprising, um, 
I think that Russian authorities, Putin and his minions, uh, understand that they will not be able to uh, to get on well with, with the middle class um, because they don't want to carry out any political reforms that can limit their power. So they decide to count on the so-called conservative class and TV uh, TV citizens. Um, and as a result, the regime has launched a massive crackdown against uh, opposition. Mm, they try to uh, uh, to frighten Russian people and make them afraid of being um, in the street to take take to the street. Um, you know that. Mm, prost prost protest leaders are nowadays um, uh, suppressed, being suppressed by the security services. Um, just for example, um, uh, dozens of, of false criminal cases of, were initiated against uh, innocent people just for their participation in the protest actions of uh, May 6th. Uh, the most popular blogger in Russia, uh, Alexei Navalny, has been accused in uh, four criminal cases and uh, absolutely fabricated. And now he's restricted to leave Moscow region, according to the investigation committee decision. Uh, another leader, Sergei Udaltsov, is under the house arrest right now. Uh, my father, Gennady Gutkov, ex-deputy, uh, who was um, uh, MP for 11 years, has been expelled from the State Duma with no trial and investigation. Uh, you can imagine, imagine just by the decision of the parliamentary majority. And uh, both Supreme and Constitutional Courts uh, decided to recognize this uh, constitutional violation. Uh, so they uh, proved it to be legal. Um, um, as you know, the Russian State Duma uh, turned into a rubber stamp or a um, mad printer and it passes different un constitutional law, uh, laws. And uh, just at the same time, uh, uh, I think that no repressive methods of Putin uh, can work now because people um, continue to take to the, take into the streets, and um, but this uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and repressive methods uh, provoke a serious conflict within the elite. Uh, conflict with the middle class as well as the West, because uh, Russian elite is deeply integrated into the world community because uh, they uh, keep their money abroad uh, here. Uh, their, their children study here in the United States and Europe. They keep their money abroad. Uh, they uh, buy up uh, real estate. And uh, uh, now Putin decided to, um, to forbid them uh, and to um, uh, to prohibit skipping money abroad, and uh, it's also uh, is leading to the uh, breakup within the Putin Putin's team. But I know that it's <laughs> uh, I'm talking too long. I just want to say that we need to be uh, to take a bit um, more moderate and. Uh, a far-sighted approach to our bilateral relations. Uh, we need, um, instead of criticizing Putin, we need to uh, to help him, to help him um, fight against Russian corruption. Because in every interview, he emphasizes the uh, importance of fighting corruption, and we need to help him to expose, take bribers um, by providing. Uh, information uh, on their acti activities abroad and, and here in the United States. Because, you know, uh, Russian uh, propaganda, Kremlin propaganda, usually uh, use um, our relations, I mean, opposition in America, you know, to discredit us. Because um, we are always being set forth as a traitors, as um, State Department agents sent to. Um, 
destroy our motherland. And for, just for instance, uh, when I was in, in, in Russia, I had heard the information spread by the state television that Dmitry Gutkov was going to United States to sell some secrets and uh, to take to get new instructions. But if we change our approach, on the one hand, we could um, show Russian citizens that uh, opposition act only according to the interests of Russia. On the other hand, um, we can uh, demonstrate that the United States uh, helped Russian people to expose uh, Russian corrupt authorities. I think it would be a more effective way to, to stop um, um, <laughs> to stop sorry to stop crackdown and to uh, try to protect human rights in, in Russia 